So here's a kid that uh, Steve Sheldon, who's a sleep doc in Chicago, refers to me because this little boy has sleep apnea. He has failure to thrive. <clears throat> and we do our orthotropic thing, and his airway improves from here to here. And Steve Sheldon calls me up and says, Bill, Ryan's sleep apnea is gone. And I was thrilled, and he was thrilled. And Kevin, who's sitting in the room here, wrote this, uh, this case up and this published in Steve's book, that, uh, this article co-authored by, uh, with, with uh, uh, I think Kevin wrote it, using this case. So the sleep apnea is gone, and here's Steve Sheldon with a kid who doesn't have to have a CPAP on anymore. That's not that patient, not our patient. But, so that's kind of cool. But is it just about, gee, he's not going to snore anymore, he's not going to have sleep apnea? Does it really matter? And Ron Harper, PhD, neurobiologist at UCLA, I heard him speak last September. Look at that. Brain damage, one night alone. Brain injury from sleep apnea. Three to four in times increased risk of hypertension. What are we doing to our children? Two to three percent of our preschool kids may have sleep apnea. Really? And we're accepting that? 